Hi, I'm Jim Matthew Sadler, and in this series of videos, we're taking a look at new games between AlphaZero, DeepMind's general purpose artificial intelligence system, and Stockfish, the TCC Season 9 chess computer competition winner and one of the strongest chess playing engines in the world. In this game, we're going to take a look at um, a game in the Leningrad Dutch. A very, very dodgy opening. It's um, actually an opening that I played um, once I stopped uh, as a professional. And um, I talked to another, another expert in that opening and I told him I'd taken it up after giving up chess. And he said, yes, yes, you're ready for that. Um, I think what he meant by that was uh, you won't mind losing too many games then. So um, it's a very dodgy opening, but when it works, it's fantastic. You look like a genius. And uh, well, I'm rather jealous of Alpha Zero because uh, it looks like a genius here. Let's have a look at the game here. So it's d4, f5, knight f3, knight f6, and the standard moves of the Leningrad Dutch. This was another opening that was uh, specified by the TCEC openings book, and uh, the last move stipulated was rook b1. Now the thing that impressed me the most here was that Alpha Zero um, played this in a very idiomatic, thematic way, and uh, that's not obvious uh, because uh, this position is already strange and the moves are a little bit odd as well. But it played a5 and knight a6, very typical moves here. And Black actually is, um, is spreading his forces all over the board. Here, um, uh, he's, uh, Black is trying to prevent White from expanding on the queen side with b4. And on the other side, Alpha Zero will uh, probably look to expand on the king side with h6 and g5. Um, now, Stockfish found it rather difficult, I think, to put a plan together in this position. And to be honest, that's not uh, a real criticism because it is difficult to play for white. These are difficult positions to, uh, to get a grip of. Um, Alpha Zero um, played some very nice moves, this rook b8 and bishop d7, again, very typical. I mean, Black's even got some ideas after moving the king of playing a move like b7 to b5. So um, c5, king h7. Um, maybe the only criticism there, normally black puts the king on h8 in, uh, in such positions, but uh, king h7 is not bad. After knight a4, knight c7, bishop d2, bishop b6, alpha zero starts to nestle its pieces on the, um, on the light, central light squares that um, Stockfish's c5 weakened. Queen c2, knight cd5, b3. Now a very nice move. Again, we always say that when Alpha Zero feels that um, it's achieved a certain um, advantageous equilibrium. It takes a little time out in order to consolidate its position. And this is this move, rook a8, defending the pawn on a5. Bishop e1, and uh, um, yeah, this is uh, um, a very typical, uh, typical moment in the, in the Leningrad Dutch, the moment where, uh, as a player, you feel that, uh, that everything is, uh, is going right. And actually, um, I actually uh, uh, showed this opening to um, uh, my co-authoring Game Changer, uh, Natasha Regan, and uh, she loved this opening because she loves uh, throwing her pieces forward at, um, at the opponent. And uh, Alpha Zero loves it too. Queen e8, e3, g5, in we go. Knight d2 and queen h5. Um, yeah, this queen is uh, moving over to the queen side and it means business. However, the thing about um, uh, defending against stockfish is that uh, stockfish puts up a hell of a resistance. And um, uh, it's found a very unusual uh, defensive maneuver here. This is bishop f3, g4, and bishop e2. So after, um, what's the point of this? I wondered, I didn't get it either. The idea is that um, after king h8, just getting the king out of that uh, annoying pin by the queen on c2, knight c4, knight e4, stockfish played h4. And um, this is a very clever idea, very clever defensive idea. Um, once the pawn moves to h4, the queen can no longer get closer with queen h3, and that pawn on h4 is also taking control of g5. So any black hopes of playing g5 have been dashed, or have they? Well, Alpha Zero is not one to uh, take no for an answer, and uh, it just played knight g5 anyway. It's a great move, it's a great move. So um, after h takes g5, h takes g5, um, it, um, well, it takes uh, the engines running on my hardware, um, it takes them quite a long time to appreciate that this is absolutely horrific for, um, for white. 
it's not um, uh, um, it's not winning straight away. But actually, what is black going to do? Black is going to play its rook over to the h file. It'll bring its other rook over to f8, and then it's going to invade with a queen, and it's going to play this move f4. And um, well, white can make a lot of moves, but um, white doesn't have anything that uh, to put it, to put against that. Um, but here, uh, Stockfish found, yeah, typically these incredible defenses that it finds, um, really quite amazing. And um, well, I, I didn't have a clue what it was doing. I thought this was suicidal. Takes, takes, f4, and then this incredible move for rook d2. And all of a sudden, you might think that black has a big problem because this rook is coming over to the h file and pinning the queen on h5 to the king on h8. Um, and this is the second beautiful part. Alpha zero sacrificed a piece already. Now we're going to get the queen. Rook h2. This is what you'd expect from, uh, from Stockfish, but actually alpha zero is intending this move. f2 check, king h1, queen takes h2, king takes h2, and rook f6. And um, I suppose this is kind of what happened in the, in, in the Nidorf game here. This, this um, row of pawns on, on e3 and f2 is cutting the, the white position in half. And black's just going to bring this rook to f8 and then give a check, and that white king is going to be completely stuck. Um, I've analyzed this with, um, with engines, and it's an absolute disaster. So um, Stockfish wouldn't be Stockfish if it didn't find another miraculous idea. And uh, it was this idea, knight e3, knight e3, and rook h2. So by capturing that pawn on e3, uh, this move f3, f2 is, uh, is stopped completely. And all of a sudden, it looks like, um, like white's found the key to win this game, because after knight c2, rook takes h5 check, king g8, rook c2. Um, well, white's simply a piece up. End of story, you might think. But there's this incredible move, really incredible move, which is bishop h3. Um, what is the idea? Well, first of all, um, just imagine that if white moved the queen, then black can simply take on f1. No more pin. Um, on, the, uh, um, on the king and queen, and black simply a piece up. Um, if white plays the obvious rook takes h3, which was played in the game, then queen takes h3. Um, yeah, and uh, what's actually happened here is that, tactically speaking, the queen is taking the rook on h3 rather than h2, which means that when black recaptures the queen, white's own queen is still hanging, and after rook c2, we reach this position. Now this is the maybe the, uh, the slightly distressing thing about playing uh, such a strong opponent as Stockfish is that Stockfish never falls into a mate. It never allows a glorious sacrificial finish. It always finds the absolute best way to resist. And here it's managed to struggle on to an ending in which uh, Black has, um, uh, in which it has actually two pieces for the rook, but Black has a lot of pawns. That looks like three to me. Um, and I was I was discussing this position with um, um, with my uh, with my co-author of, uh, of Game Changer, uh, Natasha Regan, and she said to me, I think it's a very good point. But why on earth is this position good for Black? Why are you so keen on it? Doesn't White have two pieces for a rook, which is normally a very good thing? And it is true. But um, the key thing about that you need for minor pieces is it's outposts, and especially the key thing that you need for a knight is a central outpost. And if you look at this position, there is absolutely nowhere for that knight to go. And without that, um, especially with this mass of central pawns on d6 and e7, this, um, uh, these minor pieces are not going to uh, be able to survive for long. Now, what you notice is that um, Stockfish really gives it a go, um, tries to put the bishop onto e6, hold back those pawns. But um, uh, yeah, I like alpha zeros. Uh, technique here very much. Um, it's really the classical technique. What they always say is that um, the important thing is that you can actually give up a pawn, for example, one of your extra pawns, in order to reduce the opponent's uh, forces for resistance. And this is absolutely great. Rook e2. So get rid of that active white rook. And then we're going to gradually work at pushing back those white minor pieces and those poor white minor pieces they can't hold off against the rook. So um, I'll just show you a few more moves, because it's quite, it's actually, it's actually quite uh, fun to watch. King f7, 
Can you three rook h1? I think this is the other thing that's uh, the big problem about this position for white. It's completely open. And this black rook has got, well, it can go anywhere within the white position. And uh, of course, what it can do, a little bit of disruption, and then attacking the, the pawns over there. I mean, white can't hold everything. And after bishop d1, king e7, the king comes in. And you notice the, the knight struggling to, um, uh, to hold anything at all. And after knight f7, g4, knight d6, check, king d4. Um, white didn't last uh, much further. a4, rook a2, king c5, and the first pawn fell. And black won a few moves later. What did I like about this game? Well, first of all, I'm very jealous because uh, Alpha Zero got to win with, uh, with the Leningrad. It didn't even go through the pain of uh, losing a terrible, appalling game, as I've done many times. Um, but I think what I, what, what I really liked about the game was um, how it seemed to, to feel the right way to play this opening, which I can tell you is extremely difficult to, uh, to play. And of course, these glorious tactics, this 24 knight g5, let's put that one on the board again. 24 knight g5, um, just putting a knight on prees, giving a piece for a pawn away and going for a long-term uh, attack. And then this glorious um, bishop h3 tactic, which... Um, uh, yeah, I mean, really quite outstanding. I don't think I've ever seen uh, a tactic like it, to be honest. I'm sure that's going to go into all the, uh, all the tactics books uh, in the future. And then, um, yeah, I liked very much, um, you know, that's just a um, just sort of professional player thing, but uh, I liked the ending very much. You know, this idea of two pieces not being able to, um, uh, to deal with, um, with, uh, with a rook because they've got no strong outposts. You know, it's a very nice positional theme and uh, it was, um, well, exploited beautifully by Alpha Zero. So I hope you enjoyed that. I hope there's some Dutch fans out there who are inspired to, uh, to play the Leningrad again. And uh, yeah, hope you enjoyed it.